Hey YouTube, Brian LCS. Thanks for stopping by the channel. And this video, what I've learned from my first comic book Kickstarter. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a project that I recently did, uh, The Doctor. Uh, now, most of you are probably familiar with it that watch my channel regularly. Um, I had a Kickstarter uh, and it was successfully funded. So a big thank you to uh, everybody that backed the project. But I wanted to kind of go through and talk a little bit about my experience with Kickstarter and um, some of the things that I that I learned that may be helpful for somebody who's thinking about doing a Kickstarter in the future. So um, the first thing I would suggest is that you need an audience, right? Uh, and this one may seem a little obvious, right? You need to have people that are willing to back a project that you're putting forward. But my suggestion would be not just to blindly put up a project without having some type of presence on IG or um, YouTube or X, formerly Twitter, you know, you have to have some type of following to be able to come and back the Kickstarter and or to it simply at least share it out to others so that you can get the exposure that you need. Um, I think people fail sometimes with Kickstarters where they don't really have that built-in audience. Um, and so they just put out this project and, and then it really doesn't get the uh, eyeballs that it needs to be successful. So I would just make sure that you take some time up front to make sure that you have some built-in audience. Um, and maybe it's simply just some family and friends that can help um, promote it. But you definitely want to have some base of people that can help support it and move forward. Leverage your friends, right? Leverage the people that you have in your network. Um, I'm a comic book channel. I collect comic books. I have a network of people that I'm friends with within the comic book community here on YouTube and Instagram. And so when I was getting ready to launch my Kickstarter, I reached out to them and said, hey, could I come on your channel? Could I come on and talk about my project? And I had so many yeses. And then even people that I maybe didn't think of initially said, hey, we'd love to get you on my live stream to talk about the project. So um, that is you know, just, just another way to help promote yourself. And the good thing about that is that you may have um, not, your audience may not be the same as this. some of your friends. You know, there could be people that watch your friend's channel and not your own. And so it's just another way to help get exposure um, across the board. And there are so many channels that do live streams these days. Um, so be, you know, being able to jump on and spend, you know, even just five, 10 minutes talking about the project is just, again, another way that you can help expose um, your project to a wider audience. The next tip I would suggest is to do your homework on cost. Before you go into a Kickstarter, understand what it's going to cost to produce the book, whether it's, you know, the, the writing, the artwork, the lettering, the coloring, Right. Those are just the, the basic things that you need to have done to be able to actually have a physical comic book at the end of the day. Um, but then the other things, all of the rewards that you're offering within a Kickstarter. Um, how much does it cost to get the book printed? How much will it cost for you to ship the book? You need to have that so that you can set a realistic goal um, for the campaign. Kickstarter has a, a number of tools um, that help you uh, build your uh, campaign. They have a tool for a calculator to figure out overall cost. Um, there is a messaging system within Kickstarter so you can message um, people that back your um, system. So there, and, and Kickstarter generally is pretty easy to use. Um, you can you know set up your campaign uh, and your project uh, fairly easy, pretty straightforward. If you've ever kind of just navigated a, you know a website, you you'll be able to figure it out. It, it's very easy to use. So there's definitely tools that Kickstarter provides. Um, but cost and figuring out the cost um, ahead of time so you know what to set your campaign at, what goal you need to achieve, um, is a um, certainly a tip that I recommend. Kickstarter has its own messaging system so that you can stay in touch with people that back if you want to send them updates or if you need to get their email or address so that you can send them the books once the campaign is done. But so there's this built-in messaging system that you can send to individual backers or you know that you can provide updates for the overall project as well but the thing i didn't anticipate was uh after my kickstarter launched on day one i had a ton of messages come in and most of them were spam 
people just trying to offer me services to help, you know, basically pay them money to help get eyeballs on my uh, Kickstarter campaign. And um, I, I really didn't anticipate that. And if you look, you can see you have to be a registered user of Kickstarter and it shows you how many projects you've um, kicked off yourself or how many you've funded. And so every one of those spam messages that I received, um, they had all of the users had not funded um, or supported or backed any other project. So that was a clear indicator that they were kind of just spam messages uh, and that I really should ignore them. But initially, I was replying to a lot of them because I, I wasn't sure about that. So just be be careful with that. If you if you start a campaign, be aware that you're, you're probably going to get, you know, those first couple of days inundated with spam messages, people looking to offer their services, you know, for money to help promote um, your project. So just be aware of that. One of the other things I, I learned was that pledges, so people make pledges and the money isn't collected right away. It's collected at the end of the campaign. So if you're running your you know, Kickstarter for three weeks, at the end of three weeks, if it's fully, if it's uh, successful, that's when the funds will be pulled. But one thing I didn't realize was that pledges could be canceled or changed during um, the campaign. So that was something I didn't anticipate. You know, somebody may decide that they want to back it, and then maybe a couple of weeks later, before it ends, they decide they don't want to, or maybe something's changed financially for them. I don't know what the reason is. I, I had a few pledges that were in and then canceled. Who knows what the reasons are? Not really any of my business, but it was just something I wanted to point out and to, to be aware of because there was one point, you know, I saw my my goal at a certain dollar amount and then the next day it was in at a lower amount because somebody had canceled um, one of the larger pledges that I had received. So just something to keep in mind um, that, you know, I was kind of unaware of because I just didn't have the experience with it. Now, the other thing to think about pledges is pledges may not fund at the end. So once the campaign, if your campaign is successful, that's when Kickstarter collects the money from all of your pledgers. Now, sometimes pledgers may have incorrect information. Maybe they have an old you know, bank account, a debit card, whatever the case, credit card, whatever the case may be. And so you potentially could have pledges that may not you know, actually um, fund 100% because there's some issue with, you know, whoever's uh, backing it, um, you know, like I said, with their, with their, uh, you know, financial institute. So most, now I had a few of those, but they all got resolved, but that's just another thing to keep in mind. And so what your end dollar amount uh, is when the campaign ends may not actually be what you collect. The last thing I would mention is that it takes, once the campaign ends, if it is successful, you will get the funds. Um, in about two weeks, and it's like a full two weeks. So you you know if you're waiting on that money to actually move forward with the project, you have to be patient because it will take. Um, it was 14 days for me, so I my campaign ended on June 2nd, and I didn't see funds until around June uh, 16th or 17th. Um, so I don't know if those two weeks are considered like two weeks business days or just. Two weeks in real time, my my uh, my time was a little bit, um, just taking a quick look. Yeah, it was a little bit more than two weeks, about 15 days before I actually received the funds in my bank and so that I can move forward with, uh, because I needed, for me, I needed that money to be able to send um, the money to the printer and buy some of the other rewards. So um, I just wanted to make sure, being the first time that I've ever run a Kickstarter, that I wanted to make sure that I had secured the funds before I, I outlaid any more of my own money. Um, and so that's why, um, you know, it, I was a little bit surprised at the turnaround time. But you just keep that in mind. And depending on, you know, your bank, wherever you're getting the money deposited, you know, it, it, it really varies based on, you know, they're getting a, a basically a direct deposit from Kickstarter. So depending on how quickly your bank handles it. But I would safely say it's going to be at least 14, 15 days before the end of your campaign and when you see the funds in your bank account. So just keep that in mind. So that's um, what I've learned uh, during my first uh, comic book project, um, you know, using Kickstarter. Overall, it was it was a great experience, a little bit of a little bit of a learning curve, you know, some some speed bumps along the way. But in the end, it all worked out. So, again, a big thank you. 
um, to everybody that supported it. I'm hopefully going to have the book uh, mid-July to be able to send out to everybody who backed it. And I'll have some extra copies as well. And I do have a website that I've set up. If you go to www.ecscomics.com, uh, uh, You'll be able to see. Um, you'll be able to buy a digital copy of the um, of the comic, The Doctor. If you if you didn't uh, already uh, get one in the Kickstarter, you can you still have the opportunity to buy it digitally uh, through the website. So definitely go check that out. And I'm currently working on issue two of The Doctor, um, and so excited to get that uh, going as well. Um, but I'm really excited about having the physical books in hand and being get, getting them out to. Um, all of the people that supported the project. So again, I, I, I've said it a few times, can't thank you enough for all of the support. And um, yeah, hopefully hopefully, if you're thinking about a Kickstarter, you, you find this video uh, you know helpful. And if you have any questions, certainly reach out to me on Instagram or via email. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you're considering your own uh, you know Kickstarter project or comic book project, um, I can certainly share all of the things that I've learned um, through my first uh, you know, project. So that's what I got for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.